Bonjour, my name is Karen Coogren and I'll be your host for this special Anton Cordial edition of Living in a Contactless World, The French Connection. In this episode, we're going to take a closer look at what both the UK and France have in common in terms of contactless rollout, but more importantly, what sets them apart. Now, there's always been a friendly rivalry between the UK and France. Remember the Rugby World Cup semi-final in Paris last year and the England versus France soccer match this year? Not surprisingly, the rivalry is intense in the cards business, with both countries making impressive claims for the European contactless crown. So, who will emerge the victor? There's little doubt that France has the upper hand in the cards business, with high-tech locations in towns and cities such as Sophia Antipolis in the south, as well as the Paris region, which is home to some of the biggest names in the international cards world. Ask anyone in the cars industry to name some of the biggest hitters and straight away they'll mention leading French companies such as Jamalto, Sagem Auger, Aubertour, ASK and Inside Contactless. Each of these firms has an impressive track record, both domestically and abroad. Jamalto is behind a host of contactless programmes, including two of the biggest contactless ticketing schemes in the UK and France. Oyster and Navigo, respectively. Sagem Auger's technology is behind schemes such as the Franza Bank card. Obertour's contactless and dual interface technology is being put to good use in payment schemes in a number of countries, such as South Korea, Taiwan, the UK and France. ASK's growing list of contactless implementations includes around 40 automated face collection schemes at home and an even greater number abroad. Its involvement with the RATP on contactless cards dates back to the 1990s and it's one of the leading suppliers of RATP's Navigo Pass, which is based on the Calypso specification. And Inside Contactless has shipped its technology internationally, with Micropass shipments having topped the 50 million unit milestone. Altogether, the French contribution is huge. They're the Rinaldos of the contactless cards world. They're smart, they're well known and everyone wants a piece of their action. However, crossing La Manche, the picture is slightly different, with the UK boasting fewer Premier League players. Although there are a few British firms that everyone is familiar with, such as ID Data, a big name in the banking sector, which has been on the scene since 1988, the roll call of smart card companies doesn't trip off the tongue quite so easily. Scores so far? France 1, UK 0. But what the Brits lack in major names, they certainly make up for in ambition. Some of the most impressive contactless payment schemes in Europe are currently taking place in the UK. In April, Barclaycard announced plans to issue 1 million contactless payment cards in the UK by the end of this year. This follows the launch in London last year of the 3-in-1 one, OnePulse card. The UK capital has also been host to a mobile contactless trial, with a consortium comprising of Transport for London, Nokia, O2, Barclaycard, Visa Europe, AEG and Transis. We spoke to Omar Rifat from Visa Europe about contactless technology in the UK. How have the UK launched contactless technology? They've pretty much done it like uh, most markets are doing it. So start with uh, small pilots, then at a certain moment everybody realises the benefits of uh, cooperating on the uh, infrastructure level, that's getting the readers out there, uh, outweighs the, the, the benefits of competition. So let's get together, uh, agree on a way to start this, break the chicken and egg problem, and the UK banks got together and decided upon the London launch, in fact. And uh, that's how we did it. So we launched that back in September, and uh, that served the purpose of basically getting cards and readers in one place and, and proving the concept. And now we're moving on uh, further and further. And what would you say was the roadmap for cards and mobile contactless? Well, in the UK, uh, the banks are taking a very uh, pragmatic approach. And what they're really have a very focused strategy on is to uh, get the basic card product out there. So get readers uh, in the places where customers go and get cards in those customers' hands. Um, and, and, and what they're proposing them to do is to, as, as they go forward, uh, in parallel, do some activity with mobile on the side, for example, the uh, Barclays O2 Pilot. 
um, that, that proves and validates the, uh, the value proposition for everybody in the mobile phone. And as that infrastructure becomes mature for cards, uh, in, at the same time, the phone does need some time to mature. And in the future, they all come together uh, when the time is right. And why do you think the UK is launched before France? I think that in the UK, uh, the market conditions were, uh, were favourable for it. So the members had just finished cooperating uh, to roll out uh, chip and pin, EMV. And uh, in a certain sense, the, the market structure is a bit simpler than France. So there's a, number of, a small number of large banks, and together uh, they, moved, they were able to move faster. Um, and we, see, uh, we definitely think that uh, you know, France will follow uh, in due course. The French have also been getting on with the business of launching contactless payments, with schemes such as Pay Mobile in the cities of Caen and Strasbourg involving around 250 merchants and 1,000 users. Société Générale, in partnership with Visa Europe and Gemalto, also launched a pilot scheme last year with cardholders of around 1,000 in number in La Défense area of Paris. Can you explain a little bit how Contactless has been launched in France? The approach has been twofold. Uh, the banks have uh, started contactless card payment, uh, such as uh, Banque Populaire and Société Générale, for instance, in Besançon and uh, in Paris. Uh, and in parallel, a uh, consortium of banks and operators have worked uh, on a mobile contactless solution through the, the, the Pegasus group that they have, uh, they have created. So we're now in a position where Visa PayWave is being accepted in, uh, in Paris, in Besançon, uh, in Strasbourg and in Caen as well. And why does it seem that there's more of a focus on mobile contactless than on cards? Well, with mobile contactless payment, the banks see an opportunity of uh, attracting new customers as well as uh, offering new services as well to their consumers. However, I think the banks have now realized that uh, mobile contactless payment was really the medium-term strategy. And in order to enable this uh, strategy, they had to build uh, a good acquiring infrastructure and that they would need to, uh, to roll out a contactless card uh, in, in a first step. And how about the retailers? What do they have to consider when implementing contactless? Well, what we have noticed in our, in our pilots is that uh, we had standalone solutions for the terminals which is very good actually for uh, merchants such as uh, Tobacconis, for instance, or news agents. But when it comes to bigger retailers, what we need really is uh, integrated solutions. And this is now becoming available in the market that should enable us to move to the next step, which would be uh, a, a, more, uh, a, a bigger rollout with, uh, with big retailers. Scores now, France won, UK won. Although France's contactless payment schemes haven't attracted as much attention as the UK's diverse mix, there's still plenty of reason for French optimism. Gaelic supremacy may still be maintained in the long term because, like any good football team, a lot of foundation work has already been carried out.